Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to the series where we are building patches from scratch on the mighty Artoria Mini Brute 2. So I think it's an inevitability that the first episode in this series is going to be about building a bass sound. I'm a simple man, I get a new mono synth, I build a bass patch. That's just the way it is. So before we start to give some context to the kind of patch that we're going to aim for here, uh, the Mini Brute is pretty versatile, but it does kind of like to be mean, so I'm going to lean into the meanness on this patch and, and get something hopefully pretty evil sounding, kind of an evil sounding bass. We might look at a more classic sounding bass uh, on another video, but I figured, you know, let's play to the strengths here and, and, and get something that's pretty evil sounding. With that said, let's get evil. So we've just got our uh, sawtooth wave here. Um, my plan is kind of to um, get the character of the oscillators happening in VCO1 and then use VCO2 just as a, as a sub uh, oscillator uh, to give us a little bit more weight and donk at the bottom end. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll try and set up the general character of the sound first and then we'll start looking at envelopes and, and getting some movement in there. So I think um, in the... In VCO1 we're going to make use primarily of the sawtooth and the square wave and then we're going to introduce the ultra saw and the pulse width modulation uh, to uh, get some additional flavour in there. So let's uh, mix in these two uh, oscillators. So obviously the, the square wave is a little bit more weighty. We get a bit more mid-range from the... Uh, Sawtooth there, so let's get our modulation in here. So we'll start with the PWM. Um. It's definitely a sweet spot in the middle there, isn't there? Um, I'll just turn it down for a second. Here's our sawtooth wave, and we've got our ultra saw amount here. Ultra saw is kind of like um, PWM, but for uh, the uh, sawtooth wave hear that it kind of brings in this sort of chorusing. So by default the PWM is controlled by LFO1 and, PW and Ultrasaur is controlled by LFO2. Um, we can override those on the patch and I might do if I need one of these LFOs to do something different. But at the moment the two of them are at slightly different speeds and when we mix them together It's, you know, it's quite characterful, I'm digging it. Um, I'm tempted to bring it in the triangle wave, because that's going to give us some more bottom end, but I might add the sub in first um, and make that decision based on whether I think I need a bit more um, fundamental happening. So oscillator two, let's bring that in. At the moment that's in unison. Great sounding, it's not quite in tune, so we're getting just that extra sort of uh, wobble and, and chorusing uh, but I want to put it an octave down so we'll just tune it I tend to find it easier to tune on higher notes can't quite get there in the fine mode so we're going to switch over to all which gives us a much wider range have to make smaller movements as a result but out there uh, we're on a square wave on here at the moment thought about sign but uh, that's sort of pure fundamental, and I don't think it adds as much meanness to the sound. Nice. Um, okay, so let's make that decision about the um, triangle wave, and perhaps we can balance the triangle wave in oscillator 2 a little bit. I'm in two minds. It, it does add a load of fundamental, which is just cool for the bass. But it's also kind of robbing us of some of our character, I think. There's a spot sort of halfway up if you listen carefully on, on good headphones or monitors where you kind of get that proper bottom end happening and I'll just try and get it just on that bit so it's kind of doing its job but not 
taking away the character as much. You hear it just there, that's the fundamental just pops a little bit. Okay, that's cool and buzzy. It sounded pretty evil already, uh, but let's get over to the filter and try and get things a bit darker. So we're on um, the uh, low pass filter here. What's really cool about this filter, um, I think it's a Steiner Park filter, uh, is that we can bring in the resonance and it doesn't eat all of the bottom end. If anything, actually with the cut off low, it, it adds, adds to it. Just get that kind of ripping mid-range thing happening. far but just on the cusp adds that mid-range like mm, love it okay good now um although this is in the amp filter uh, the amp section sorry the uh, brute factor is definitely something which interacts really strongly with the filter so the brute factor is this thing on the uh, on the brute series which basically a feedback loop back in it's kind of like the classic uh, taking the output from a headphone out and back into the external input on on some synths i think are the uh, MS20 is one place where sort of famously that's that's done. Um, on the, uh, the, the 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 Mini Brute Two editions, they've tamed the brute factor a little bit so that you've got a bit more nuance to what it can do. Because on I think on the original ones, it could get a bit overbearing pretty quickly. But what we can do here is there's certainly in the first half of the sweep, you'll hear that there's just extra saturation and it actually brings in an extra bottom end uh, if we have the cutoff set low. So. Dull the top end a little bit. Well, that is cool sounding now. Hmm. Okay. So we're getting a little bit of clickiness. Um, so that's going to be uh, mostly coming from the AD envelope, which is currently controlling the VCA, uh, the, the, the output VCA, that is. Um, can probably alleviate that just by giving a little bit of attack and decay. Might there you go, it's gone. And you know, if you if if you hear people complaining about clicky envelopes, what they are often complaining about is fast envelopes. And if you just move the attack and decay a little bit, then that that really does help us out. And we're currently on gate mode on the AD envelope, which means uh, that um, as long as I'm holding down the note, this will stay fully open. If we go to trig. It's going to open and close really quickly. Or not quickly. This might be an interesting way to play it. Yeah, perhaps we'll have that. That decay. That decay a bit longer here. Okay, let's get a bit of movement happening now. So um, I think we need to have a bit of a, a, a bit of an attack to this sound. Um, do we want a plucky attack or do we want it sort of one pin? Let's try those two options and see which one we like, shall we? So um, a sort of an attacky plucky envelope we would define on the ADSR. So by default, the FM amount for the cutoff, so that's how our filter movement uh, is uh, coming from the ADSR. We can obviously override that on the patch bar if we want. So let's try a plucky envelope. So plucky envelope, uh, instant attack, quick decay, so low but not instant, and low sustain. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what if we have something which moves a lot slower? So if we have our attack and decay uh, kind of a bit higher, that's going to ramp up slowly, ramp down slowly and land on the sustain. And we'll also have the release setters uh, along as the decay so that we sort of have parity if we play staccato. Two minds. 
is this? <laughs> oh man, I know which one I want. Yeah, no, I think I want it long like that. I want to get some more movement in there though now. Um, I want to hear the filter wobbing now, right? Because that'd be really cool. Uh, so how are we going to do that? So, um, FM here has been controlled by the ADSR, but I want to get the filter moving the envelope, uh, moving the, um, sorry. Let me start that again. I want to get the LFO moving the filter cut off as well as the ADSR. So I don't want to override what this is doing. I want to um, add to it. And luckily what we've got here is this at one to cut off knob. Now what this does uh, is it allows you to mix another control voltage source kind of into the filter. So this allows us to have the cutoff move um, uh, more and more depending on how we set this up. So at the moment it's set to pressure. So if I turn this up, now allows me to push harder to, to get that to open up, which is cool, actually. Um, it's not quite what I want. I want it automated. So basically what this means is we can put any modulation source into um, the patch point associated with this control and then use this to have an additional, essentially an additional FM control, if you like, on top of this one here. So what we'll do is we'll take... Um, uh, which one? No, we'll take LFO2 and bring that into the input for that attenuator, which is down here. So in one attenuator. Um, now if we turn that up, we've got it controlling, uh, controlled by our LFO here. Um, put it faster than that. pretty cool I kind of want that to fade in a bit um, could we achieve that I think we could right now I don't know if this would work I haven't actually tried this yet uh, so I don't want that to be happening the whole time I kind of want that wob 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 to fade in as the uh, filter comes up so essentially I want the strength of that to be following the ADSR envelope can we do that? I believe we can. Shall we find out? So let's take the output from LFO um, 2 and instead take it into this VCA input here. And then we're going to take the output and put that back into the uh, attenuator like that. We should basically have the same thing happening as we had before. Cool. Uh, so what the uh, VCA allows us to do is also have um, the amount that this is sort of letting through. You can kind of think of it like a valve, if you like. And we can control that valve using another CV source. So if we take the output of the ADSR and put it into the CV input of our VCA, hopefully... doing more as that envelope opens up which kind of makes me feel like I'm able to push the amount that it's doing because it was at the start of the note where it felt like it was getting in the way That's cool. 
So what we've done here essentially uh, is we've added what you might call an LFO uh, delay uh, on some synths where you have um, a kind of a ramping LFO happening. We can achieve that by making use of our envelopes, the VCA uh, and uh, the, the LFO output. So that's pretty cool. So I think we're nearly there, but I've just thought of one more way that we can make this a little bit more uh, evil and angry. And it's, it's really easy. We just have to turn one knob. We don't have to patch anything else in. On the VCO1 section here, we have an FM knob. Uh, now, you might think FM, well, that's usually assigned to an LFO or something uh, to get sort of vibrato. But actually, on the uh, Mini Brute 2, it's hardwired into the output of VCO2, which, of course, is audio rate, or, or, or is in our patch at the moment anyway. Um, so this is audio rate FM. Uh, um, and it's exponential FM, which can get pretty unruly if we crank that control. But if there's probably, if we're careful, a sweet spot where actually what we get is just additional harmonics happening, which could be very, very cool. Let's check it out. So yeah, pretty much smack bang in the middle there. really cool extra bit of sort of harmonic so there's it off here there's just this extra grit if we push it push it like almost a millimeter further immediately we get into weird un not unusable but in the context of this patch Okay, uh, that's pretty much done, except like this is the kind of patch where I want to add some reverb. So I'm just going to reach uh, across and turn on my Polara, which this is plugged into. Just see how that sounds. It's the spring setting. Let's try, uh, let's try hall pubs. Oh. <laughs> Okay, there we go. That is uh, the patch. It is an evil bass sound. It's probably not a conventional classic bass sound, so I'll do another video with one of those in. Um, but uh, it's certainly a fun one, especially once we put that reverb on at the end. And we've seen some interesting stuff here. So we, we've got this idea of the LFO uh, decay, essentially, uh, delay rather, uh, by using the LFO output into the VCA and then controlling that VCA with uh, another modulation source. That's really cool. Uh, quite an, a neat little trick uh, that I quite like. And we've also looked at how we can use the FM to get additional grit. We've looked at the brute factor and how much more nuanced it is on this uh, version of the Mini Brute than it was on the previous version. Uh, we've brought together multiple modulation sources into the uh, filter to get lots of movement out of there. Um, yeah, so you know, quite an interesting uh, patch, not a, a, a general use bass patch perhaps, but I think it's quite a, a, a nice sound. Nice sound, it's an evil sound, it's a nasty sound, but nasty in a good way. Anyway guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please uh, leave a thumbs up on the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We will be coming back to the Mini Brute quite a lot over the coming weeks uh, because it's ace.
As always, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Take care, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.